because as your heart opens and the vibration of love starts to grow stronger and stronger, you start to recognize them as yourself. You're not your brother's keeper or your sister's keeper. to realize that you literally are your brother. I just want to introduce you guys to Nicholas if, if you're new to the show, but here you go. Hi, everyone. <laughs> uh, oh, I see. I see Jackson. I see Charlotte and Mary. And John, Tina. Oh, Gemma, Patrick. Oh, that's so sweet to see you guys. <laughs> Marianne. Katrina. I see Jeff. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's sweet. I, I usually didn't get a chance to see everyone like this. That's sweet. But, oh, and Raphael. And, oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> hey, guys. Well, yeah, yeah, me and Andy have, have uh, at least since yesterday, have having some beautiful joinings and even this morning and, and yeah, it was great when we were talking this morning, there was just this um, theme that came up that I wanted to at least start us off with, which was uh, basically getting off the noodle. <laughs> there was, uh, David has this video, which I think is literally called getting off the noodle or, or undoing linear time. And yeah, I just, I'd found myself kind of uh, late last night in this upset and it seems to be about comparisons or even thoughts of uh, like I should be different or I should be farther along or I shouldn't be upset about this and, and all of that. And, and my dear, my companion Yuta, just had uh, quite a long joining with me late last night. I think it ended around 1 a.m. It was just very sweet. It was very helpful and just kept kind of walking me through it. And it was just what I wanted to share was kind of the, yeah, where in my mind, these expectations, just think it's down there, like these self-fulfilling prophecies that will just always fail because uh, really none of them are given by the spirit. And I just realized this morning when I was running with Andy, I was like, oh yeah, this is a continuation of this add-on thing I was sharing in my Facebook live <laughs> yesterday. Any expectation that I put in time and space and you know myself is, is an add-on. It's an addition which the spirit hasn't given. <laughs> and I could just see the way she would, she was walking me through it was you know, here I am, community, I'm at this point, and then I think this should happen at this point, this should happen at that point, you know, this is a whole noodle, this is uh, looking at the horizontal, the time and space, and okay, yeah, this should happen at that time, and that time, and that time, and, and it has a linear progression, and, you know, it, it, each point has its meaning, like everything I see has all the meaning it has for me, so okay, when I get to this point, I can have this meaning. When I get to that point and this thing happens, I get that meaning. Basically, I get worthiness. And basically, here I am over here, and these things haven't happened, and I'm feeling upset. I'm not feeling worthy. I'm not feeling good. And, and it's just because I've put myself on the timeline. You know, I've allowed add-ons <laughs> again to my mind. When really, Jesus is just reminding us that, you know, turn the noodle the other way come back to this very moment is there actually a problem right now you know if you're just here right now with me that's what jesus is saying is there actually an issue you know is there a problem it's only when you set these expectations on your own like that you didn't <laughs> join with me on <laughs> you know i didn't give them to you you know that's kind of the whole issue just stay with me right now that's all that matters not a couple months from now, and not what happened before, just right here, right now in this moment. And 
and yeah, that's that's as well with what happened. I was sharing this on a Facebook Live because I got all excited with this <laughs> healing I was going through because I had such a contrast experience in my state of mind of of really kind of stepping away from these add-ons that actually felt very subtle for me. Again, an add-on to me is anything that you know I have put in addition to the spirit's present guidance. You know, the, the Jesus is telling me, okay, do this. And then my mind goes, okay. And you know what would also be helpful? <laughs> you know, it's like, you can already feel it. Energy. It's funny. It's like, no, just do only that and trust that it is enough. That's what Kirsten was sharing with me. And it, it's so helpful. It's like, do only that. Just follow the present guidance. And it's, it's enough because it's coming from Jesus. <laughs> he knows time and space. I think, you know, Andy was saying on our very first broadcast, like, and I think it was even the clip that you had shared recently. It's like, okay, Holy Spirit knows all of time and space. And here I am with this limited point of view. Whose judgment should I trust? <laughs> Whose guidance should I trust? Mine or all of, you know, the one who sees all of time and space and the greatest good for everything. <laughs> so... Yeah. 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 Really, it feels like it's a control thing as well, because it's like you know the course says the script is written, and basically what we're trying to get to is an experience that this is actually all a movie that we're just watching, that we're just observing. Like you know, Jesus said, "Be passersby," but it's like there's this constant temptation to think that actually I can affect what goes on in the world and I can affect my life and I can tweak things and make it a little better so I can feel happier. And it's like, it's as if I know my own best interests or as if it's even possible to actually change the script, basically to change something in the world in a way that I want to make me feel better. But actually like in the Course of Miracles, it says that's impossible. You know, the script is written. I see only the past. And really what um, Jesus is saying is that we're going to be our most happiest at, in a detached state of mind, you know, where we actually, where we're the dreamer of the dream and we're just watching all of life just go by as if it's a movie and we're not so identified with the character that we're looking through this point of view from. And, um, yeah, I just, I just know for myself, I want to get into like a consistent experience of that, you know, because I've had glimpses and they're so beautiful and they're so amazing. And then it feels like then this like control thing comes back in and it's like, Oh wait, actually hold on. Forget about the movie. I know something that I can do to make my life better. Like, <laughs> and then it's like, but it, it never feels good. You know, it's like, it's such a trick. This control thing comes in and it's like, yeah, actually I can do this. I can do that. I want this and I want that. And that would make me happy. Like as if I can even alter anything um, to suit my needs as if I even know what I need. You know, it's like, it's all these conclusions and all these assumptions. And really it's like, actually I have no idea what I want. And it's like the course says, like, I do not know who I am. I do. I don't know where I'm going. And um, I don't know what the rest of it is. Something like <laughs> We don't know anything at all <laughs> is what it's saying. <laughs> it's true. Like when we're in that state of mind, like the, I don't know mind, it's like, that's when we're happiest. But then when we're trying to control things and it's like, I know who I am, this is me. And I like, I don't know. I like cars, women, money, whatever. I like tech, whatever it might be. And, and it's like, and then thinking that I need those things to make me happy. But really it's like, actually, wait, let me remember that I don't know anything. And that's like, oh, mm. thank God. It's like, I can feel peaceful again. I don't know anything. It's like, let me go back to just watching the movie because my happiness is not going to be in this world. We want to get to a state of mind that's so detached from this world that it's literally like not of this world. You know, Jesus always says like, um, I don't know what he says, something like, my kingdom is not of this world. And he's basically talking about, at least what I feel like he's talking about is like a state of mind, you know, that's beyond this world. Because the way I see the world in that kind of way is that really the world is another way of saying the ego's thought system. So it's like, 
as long as our mind is in the ego's thought system, it's impossible to be happy. Like no matter what, you can try all these different things. You know, you can have sex with the most beautiful women. You can make millions of dollars, um, whatever, like your wildest dreams. You can do all that. Yeah, sure. You'll have some temporary pleasure. And then maybe like a day later, it's like, oh, I'm craving something else now. And like, let's say you have so much money that you can do whatever you want. It'll just be like, you, you do something that you think you really want. And then it's like, oh, now what's next? And then you go and do what, whatever's next. And then you're like, okay, that wasn't really it either. And then you go and do something else. And it's never really it because really what we're looking for is something that's really consistent, like a consistent happiness. We're not just looking for like brief pleasures. Um, you know, it's like, it's like I'm thinking of the, the diagram in the hospital, you know, like your heartbeat. It's like it, it goes along and then a, a brief pleasure. Yeah, maybe like a little spike, but then a long period of I'm dead. <laughs> and then you go through maybe like a month later, it's like something that excited you. You're like, oh, I'm alive for, for like a second. I'm alive. And then it's like, okay, I'm back to being dead. And it's like <laughs> the default state of mind if you think you're in this world is that you're dead, you know, and like that isn't really of the body. It's like a state of mind. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we don't, we don't want to be dead. Like we want to be alive. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so yeah. And yeah, I feel like practically speaking, the mind training of course in miracles is bringing to this state where we can be alive consistently. And, you know, to me, life is listening to the Holy Spirit because that means you're identifying with the Spirit and the Spirit's beyond this world. So you're not stuck in this world full of limits because that's all this world is. It's just full of limits. You know, it's like I'm lim limited by this body, which is limited by a million other things. It gets sick. It's going to die. It, it's going to get problems and pain. And it's like, it seems like it's, it almost seems like I'm trapped in a body. It almost seems like my mind's trapped in a body. And, um, and yeah, we really want to just unwind from that because it's just, it's all a deception. It's all a trick and nothing, none of the body's adventures are ever going to satisfy us. Hmm. Yeah. And and we can say that a million times to ourselves, but we really need the experience. And if you if you're at a place where you're thinking, okay, yeah, um I am kind of bored with this life, you know, like I tried all these different things and it's like what else is there? Like is there anything else? It's like that's actually a really really good place to be because your mind's going to be then open for another experience to be shown that maybe I'm wrong about everything I think. Let me just be open to maybe there's something else, you know? That little crack of openness is so helpful, especially if you're like disillusioned with the world. Because then if you have that little openness, it's like, okay, I don't know anything. I'm open to seeing if there's anything else. And if there's anything, if, if there's any kind of higher power, anything out there, please, please show me please convince me. Like, I don't have to say maybe like you, you believe you don't believe in God or something, you know, it's just maybe like a little crack. It's like, okay, I don't know what I believe. I don't know anything. If there's anything higher than me, just please give me an experience that you're there. Give me an experience that I'm wrong, that this is all there is, that there is something better, that there is something consistent, you know? And then just be open to seeing what happens, you know. The open-mindedness is really the key. And it's, I know it's like, I think it's like the last characteristic of the teacher of God in the Course, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> wow. I'm like still absorbing all that. <laughs> uh. And, um, Yeah, I know. Like, so that's all kind of been my prayer recently. Even for the show, I kind of told myself the number one thing I want for the show today 
Well, I guess there's two, two number one things. One of them was to have a lot of fun. And the other one was for it to be involuntary, like completely involuntary. And uh, I think they actually, well, they do go hand in hand. And so that's, that's what I want my entire life to be, like completely involuntary and a lot of fun. Mm. And, yeah. and yeah, we just have to let go of our own personal control in order to go into that involuntary stream. Like it's like I talked about last show. It's like, well, actually I use a little different metaphor for it i said like there's this stream and i was talking about guidance but yeah it's like it's like you're lying on your back floating down a gentle river and that's how that's how i think most of us want life to be Mm. yeah Yeah, that's true that's just the flow of the guidance and yeah any expectations or any control as you so beautifully we're talking about that just gets in the way. And, you know, like you were saying, the mind training and yeah, just my experience has been, it's just, okay, you know, notice the expectations and then hand them over to whatever higher power, whatever you feel like for me, I just, it's like, you know, Jesus help me with this. Like, I, I feel like I want this and yet I don't feel like it's given. Like you had mentioned sex relationships, all of that. And it's been the same thing for me. And I've just, it's been really cool to see the evolution in my mind more and more and more where you know these things that you know oh i really want to have sex or whatever it is that would be occurring in my mind or i really want relationship or oh i really want to do this thing or that thing it's actually just been seeing in my own experience like you know if i judge it or anything if i make it wrong it gets stuck i can't it's like it's got to be in this non-judgment handing it over and and then if we can't seem to hand it over, if we can't seem to let go, if we are stuck in linear time and can't seem to, you know, switch the noodle around <laughs> to come to this still place in this moment, it's like that, that has to be okay. Like that has to, we can't then be like, oh, well now, I'm, you know, messing up even more. It's like, no, that just keeps getting it more stuck. It's like, okay. And that'll be the ego's anthem. You suck. <laughs> That's, you suck. I want you dead. That's the ego's anthem. <laughs> And yet we follow it because we're so familiar with it. There's this familiarity and, you know, there's this great video. I love just the title of the video even uh, from David. It's called, I think, familiarity or like bursting joy or like bursting love. And that's really our option. There is no middle. There is no middle. There's not an us, an ego, and a Holy Spirit. It's like we either have like the egoic thoughts or the Holy Spirit thoughts. And there are no neutral thoughts. I believe that's a workbook lesson. You know, they all have this effect on our mind. Our thoughts are very powerful. And, and yeah. And so it just becomes like, like in my experience, the deeper I keep going, it just becomes this vigilance of like, okay, you know, I, I don't have a middle ground here. I'm either listening to spirit or, or the ego and, and the ego wants me dead. So, <laughs> You know, and it offers really nothing of value. And I have to keep seeing. That's kind of the mind training I've experienced. Like, until I'm willing to see the full extent of my own self-hatred, basically in any moment, until I'm willing to, you know, have the full experience of whatever's bothering me in that moment, most likely I'm not going to be willing to let it go. Others might be more willing, but I've seen myself to be a bit stubborn. (laughs) So it's like I have to seemingly go through the pain to see, okay, that was me following the ego or that was me you know, because it was painful, it's not of the spirit, but I have to like, somehow in my mind, I've had to see over and over and over and over and over again that it's, it's not serving. It doesn't serve. It doesn't feel good. It's not, it's not worthy of my holy mind, but I have to keep seeing as an experience. I can be told that over and over and over again, but until, you know, I have to have that experience over again, I have to be convinced by the spirit, you know, because it's so ingrained. So, yeah, the mind training does become, you know, handing it over. If I can't hand it over, try and join with a mighty companion. If that doesn't work, you know, or even before that, you know, a spirit, a levels of mind, something to help me get clear about. If none of those work, then just (laughs) really be with it. And actually the whole time it's really being with it. Watch it. Watch it very closely. 
see that the expectations, the, the being in linear time, the not being present, all of it is, is not giving you the experience you want. But like we have to pull the projection back. It's not because of the world. It's because of our expectation. It's because of our linear time addiction that we're unhappy. It's because of these, you know, these goals and all these rules we have set for ourselves that we never were supposed to. <laughs> you know, we're supposed to be clueless. We're supposed to have an I don't know mind like Andy was talking about. You know, our holy mind is conceptless. You know, we have added everything onto it. And so all of it hasn't been given by Jesus. It's like all, the only goals you should have or anything or guidance is, is from the spirit, not because it's wrong, you know, to follow you, but because it's not worthy of you. You're worthy of peace. You know, we're all worthy of it. We're worthy of feeling love, you know, having joyful days, having miracles. You know, if miracles do not occur and they are natural, something has gone wrong and you're not guilty for it <laughs> but you know it is an opportunity just like in the movie divergent i love that movie because there was like this kind of positive reinterpretation if you haven't seen that movie you know check it out or check it on mwge uh i don't know if i can give a full context for it but i'll just share the part i wanted to and yeah this like main character she's just very like intuitive like this iso and basically anytime she kind of gets into this or like this fearful situation for her it's like this immediate experience of like oh it's not real you know it's like she'd be in these simulate uh, simulations and it would just be this trigger for her to basically go within and pray like check again and so actually that's a positive reinterpretation of any upset you have great it's actually just like any upset is just remember come back with them. Remember, you are dreaming. <laughs> like Andy has this shirt. I would see him wear sometimes. It was always so wonderful. I think he even had it on his desktop computer. You, like, remember, you are dreaming. You know, remember, this upset is not causative in the world. It's from your mind. You know, it's always that way. And yet, you know, we find all the excuses in our mind of, no, I really think this time, <laughs> I really think this time it's because you know, A didn't happen, B should have, you know, all this. It's like, no, it's, it's because I have, you know, I have added a thought or a goal or an expectation that wasn't given by the Spirit. I have got an add-on. Add yeah. Yeah, and I think uh, you mentioned the remember you are dreaming. And actually, I need to find that shirt. I don't know where it went. <laughs> but I know it's, it's, that's basically the goal of the course. And what we want to try to do is, or what the Holy Spirit is trying to help us do is let go of all these self-concepts that keep us attached to this world. Because as long as we have these self-concepts of who we think we are, then how are we supposed to be the dreamer of this dream? And how are we supposed to remember that we're dreaming if we have these self-concepts? Like, let's say I have a self-concept of I'm um, a Persian boy with black hair and uh, I like certain things, I have these preferences or whatever. You know, it's like, well, you can obviously see right there that I'm not the dream or the dream if I think that. So it's like the Holy Spirit's really gentle with us as we let go of all these beliefs that uphold all these self-concepts that we have. And, and the thing is, the ego will try to latch on on this journey and um, try to make up new self-concepts or try to if you're, if you're letting go of old ones, it's going to try to find a new one. It's like, oh, look over here. There's a, there's a self-concept right there. Let's try that one. <laughs> and uh, so we really have to just be genuine and authentic with everything that's going on with us in our mind. Um, because, yeah, it really could be anything. It could even be like, oh, uh, you could be a speaker. You know, It's like before for me, it was like I – the self-concept that I was striving for was a multimillionaire, um, have nice cars and all this kind of stuff. And as I let that one go, the ego is trying to find new ones because it doesn't want me to remember that I'm dreaming. So then I even noticed a thought the other day. It's like, oh, you could be a really good speaker. People are telling you that you're pretty good at speaking on this show. Like that could be a self-concept. Like the ego is, you know, like whispering in my ear on my shoulder, like uh, there's still a way to be in this world uh let's like trying to give me some kind of temptation but it's like no i want to be 
the dream of the dream. You know, that's the experience that I want. And that's the experience that I want consistently. And no self-concept is going to give me the freedom that remembering that I'm dreaming is going to give me. Because really, in my mind, I just see self-concepts as like some kind of like, you know, if you draw like a, a square in your mind, it's like, it's like, and then you're that square when there's like this vast eternity available to you right now. But then there's this like little box and it's like, oh, that's me. And it's like, it's like this tiny speck. If you think of like a tiny speck of dust that's like on this chair behind me, in terms of this entire universe, all the galaxies and all the planets and everything. And I'm like, oh, oh that's me. You see me right there. See that speck of dust? That's me. It's like, <laughs> it's like why, why would we want that if something so much more vast and bigger and eternal is available to us right now? So, yeah, I think. But as long as we think like, you know, oh, my life's going amazing. Like, it's amazing. Sometimes there's ups, sometimes there's downs, but that's normal. You know, like everyone's like that. That's, and that's the kind of thing that keeps us trapped. It's like looking at other people and being like, um, either comparing with them. It's like, I'm doing better than them. It's like, oh yeah, those starving children in Africa. Well, I'm doing better than them. So my life's good. What are you talking about? I don't need to be a dreamer of the dream. I'm doing well. But really it's like, um, Jesus says in the course, it's, it's like, it's not that you ask for too little. It's at, no, what is it? <laughs> I forget. It's, it's not that you ask for far too much, but it's like, you're a- actually asking for far too little because yeah, I don't know what I'm saying, but yeah. <laughs> no, I get it. No, what I, wanted. I think I, I said what I wanted to I say. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, actually, as you were even talking earlier, you were just mentioning like, oh, we have to somehow, you know, for us, you know, for people who don't think their life is bad or, oh, it's going so well. It's like, oh, sometimes, you know, we do need to play some things out as, as given just to see that it's not what we really wanted. And even one of those movies that was coming to my mind, um, okay, I'm going to kind of blank. I think it was called like Bedazzled or something, but basically in the movie, he gets seven wishes from actually, he doesn't really know it in the moment, but it's like the devil. And he's like, okay, I get, you know, I want to be a millionaire. And then it like totally crashes on him. Okay, well, I want to be the best poet in the world or the smartest person. And he basically tries it all out, all the things of the world. And you see that at, at the end of the day, he's still not happy. None of it actually goes the way he wants because he doesn't know his own best interest. Again, we're asking for far too little, like Andy was talking about. We actually, you know, to ask really for, you know, our magnitude, you know, is, is Jesus, what is your will for me? You know, what would you have me do? Because again, the Holy Spirit has all of time and space in mind and is always looking for our greatest good. And so that's like asking for the magnitude. What would you have me do now? Like, what, what, what is your will for me? That's the most loving thing. That's how we get into our magnitude. <laughs> Okay. So thank you, Nicholas. I think we're all times up now, but thank you guys for joining us. It was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun. I know Nicholas did too. I think our next show is in three weeks. Um, But I wanted to bring up the online retreat, but they'll probably do that. But thank you guys so much. Thank you for joining us. See you in three weeks. See you. Thank you so much.